Hi everyone, my name is Miss Eliza and I'm here today to talk to you about safety. So I work at Carl Emergency Department and I get to take care of people who are having emergencies every day. So today we're going to talk about how we can work together so that we can prevent you guys from getting into those unsafe situations where you might have to come see me in the emergency room. Today we're going to focus on falls, but first I want to talk about your brain. Now, let's talk about why your brain is so important. What does your brain help you do? Is it helping you right now? Think about what your brain helps you do. Your brain helps you at school. Your brain helps you when you want to run outside and do sports. Your brain also helps you uh, wiggle your toes. Your brain helps you tell you when you're hungry. Your brain is really important, so we need to take extra special care that we protect it and make sure that it's always going to be safe. So what are some things that can make us fall? If you look at my pictures here, you can see a couple different things. But in the winter, ice can make us fall, or snow, we can slip. What about when your shoelaces are untied? You think those can make you fall? Having an area that's not picked up or toys that are sitting out, or what about at school? Does anybody know somebody that leaves their books on the floor? And you might trip over those, right? Or you could trip over an apple that fell from a tree. Or stairs that don't have a railing if we're running down them really fast. All those things can make you fall. What about this one? Has anybody ever slipped on water when there wasn't a sign around that told us that it was gonna be wet there? Those are all different things that can make us fall, and there's lots of others that can make us fall, too. So what can we do to make sure we're as safe as possible so that we don't fall? So we can tie our shoes, or if you don't know how to tie your shoes, you can have somebody teach you how to tie your shoes, or you can wear shoes that don't have shoelaces so you don't trip. We have janitors and custodians and housekeepers who put up these wet, wet floor signs so that we know that there might be something wet. We can help clean our area, keep things off the floor. We can also help somebody up the stairs, hold their hand to make sure that they know where they're going. We can also make sure that we're using the railing appropriately if you have stairs in your house or at your school or if you go shopping somewhere and there's stairs. Make sure you use that railing because it's there to help you so you don't fall. In this picture, it looks like she's putting away her toys so they're not sitting on the floor so she doesn't accidentally trip or slip or stumble and fall. Now, who likes to go swimming? Yeah, it's a lot of fun to go swimming, isn't it? And usually at pools, there's people that look like him and there are lifeguards and it's their job to make sure that we're safe when we're at the pool. Now. Pools are made out of concrete, right? So they're really, really hard surfaces. So if we fall, it might hurt a little bit more than if we fell somewhere else because it's such a hard surface. And pools usually have water in them, right? So what happens when water gets outside the pool after somebody does a big cannonball and there's water out there on the side and somebody goes running by what do you think might happen while they're running? They might slip and they might fall. And when they fall, they might hit their head, right? And it's probably gonna hurt pretty bad if they fall and hit their head because it's made out of concrete, right? So what's one thing that the lifeguards always say when they see somebody running? First they blow their whistle and they say, stop, don't run. What about sports? Who likes to play sports? Raise your hand if you like to play sports. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But there are certain things that we need to make sure that we use so that we're safe when we play sports. Okay, now use your brain and think about some different things that you use when you play sports to make sure you're safe and some different things that you've seen people on TV wear. What are some things that we use to keep us safe when we're playing sports? Give me some hints. This guy's decked out, right? He's ready to go play his sport. 
He's got all his safety gear. He's got knee pads. He's got elbow pads. He's got shoulder pads. He's got a helmet. He's even got a mouthpiece in so that if it accidentally gets hit in the head, his teeth are okay. What are some other things that we use? What are some other things? These people have a helmet on while they're on their bicycle. What about if we're out on the water? What if we're doing water activities? Do you think we should always wear our life jacket? Yeah. And what about if we're gonna go in the car? Or if we're gonna go in an ATV somewhere? Should we wear our seatbelt? Yeah. Those are all different things that we wear so that we can stay safe while we're playing those fun sports, right? Because it's not fun if you get hurt. So we need to make sure we're going to be as safe as possible so we can have as much fun as possible. Now, I know it might have been a little while since you guys have been in school or you're coming back to school now, but why do we go everywhere in lines when we're at school? There's a couple reasons. One reason is so that we can all stay together so nobody gets lost, right? But the other reason is if you're in line, you're not going to run into somebody. You have to just pay attention to where you're walking and make sure that you're in your spot so that you don't bump into somebody. There's another thing that we're going to talk about as far as having space around us. When we're at school, we always have to take turns. And really, when we're at home, we have to take turns too. But why do we have to take turns? Why can't we all just run up to each other and, and, and be really close to each other and maybe even push somebody. Why is it important that we don't do that? There's a couple reasons. So there's a couple reasons we can't push or shove and why we have to take turns. We have to take turns because it's safe, right? It's not safe if we're all trying to do the same thing at once because there's a lot of us, right? You guys have pretty big classrooms. There's quite a few people and everybody wants to do the same thing, right? Everybody wants to see what's going on and that's okay but we have to take turns. It's not safe to push or shove because somebody might fall, right? And they might get hurt. But there's another reason why we're not supposed to push, shove, because it's dangerous and because it's not very nice. How does it feel when somebody pushes you or shoves you? They push you out of the way or they shove you over there. How does that feel? How does it make you feel inside? Not very good, right? So we need to make sure we're being very respectful of other people. Because if we're pushing, we're not being nice, we're not being respectful. Now what are we going to do if we accidentally bump into somebody and make them fall? Well, first we're going to say sorry, right? That's the first thing we should do because nobody means to push into somebody, make them fall. So we say, I'm sorry. We help them up. We ask if they're okay. And what if they're not okay? What are we going to do? We're going to go tell an adult, right? Because if they're not okay, they need some help, okay? Who knows what a personal bubble is? or personal space, who knows what that is? Okay, I'm gonna tell you. Personal space is the space we need around us to stay safe, okay? And we need to respect it. Each of you have personal space. And it doesn't always feel good when people get in your personal space, but it's also not safe. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys this. So personal space, you can figure it out, not right now if you're in the classroom, but when you get home, you put your arm out like this and you make a big circle all the way around, okay? Now that's how much personal space you need, or that's how much space you need to have personal space. That's how much room I need to make sure I have in between me and somebody else to make sure that I don't accidentally bump into them, they don't bump into me, and then have one of us fall. So that's personal space, and we need to be really respectful of that. That space of everybody. Now let's talk about when you're at home. When you're at home, there's all kinds of things that are fun or things that we like, but we have to make sure that we stay safe. 
Now, I ask this question a lot. Why do we have screens on our windows? Well, I'm going to tell you why. It's to keep bugs out, right? Because bugs can't fit through those screens. Bugs like to come into our house sometimes, but we don't like it when bugs come in our house, right? So those screens are there to make sure that those bugs stay outside where they belong. Now, a lot of people think that those screens are on windows so that you and I don't fall out of those windows when we're looking outside, if we're looking down the street, or if we're looking to see who just pulled into our driveway. No, well, those screens are for bugs because how big is a bug? This big, right? How big are we? This big. Do you think that when that bug comes buzzing along and it hits the screen or it touches the screen, do you think that it breaks the screen? Have you ever seen the screen break because of a bug? No, right? But what if you or I go and we push up against that screen and we lean all the way into it, we give it all our weight. Do you think that screen might break? Yeah, that screen might break and then we might fall, fall out the window and hurt ourselves. So I want you to repeat after me. Don't lean on the screen. Okay. All right, one more time. Don't lean on the screen. Good job, guys. Now, who knows somebody that leans back in their chair like that? Why shouldn't we do that? Most of your teachers will tell you not to do that. But why? Do you think they're worried that you might fall? And when you fall, what's the first thing that's going to hit the ground? Your head. So it's really important that we keep all four on the floor. Can you guys repeat that after me? We're going to keep all four on the floor. Good job. Now, most people have a bed at home. And we're going to talk about beds. There's actually a really good story that goes along with beds and people who fall. Well, actually not people, but monkeys. Do you guys know what story I'm talking about? Yeah, the monkeys jumping on the bed. And what kept happening to these monkeys when they were jumping on the bed? They kept falling. Yeah. And when they fall, they bump their head, right? Now, their mama took them to the doctor. Every time that they fell, took those monkeys to the doctor. And what did the doctor keep saying? No more monkeys jumping on the bed. So it's really important that we don't jump on furniture, beds or couches or recliners, because we might fall off and bump our head too. Now, raise your hand if you've ever had a cast. Have you ever had a cast, a broken bone? Now, casts aren't very fun to have. There's a lot of things that you can't do when you have a cast. I'm going to tell you a couple. You don't get to play in PE. You don't get to do sports. You can't really be outside and run and jump and skip and hop. Um, you usually can't walk very good if they're on your leg. If it's on your arm or your hand, you can't write very well or color. So there's a lot of different things that we can't do when we have a cast, so we need to make sure we're taking every opportunity to make sure that we're being safe so that we don't break bones. Now I'm going to tell you guys a story. I've got a couple pictures that are going to come up on the next slide, and they're not very pretty pictures, but I think you guys can all handle them. Now I'm going to tell you a story about a patient I saw. This patient's name was Johnny, and he was about you guys' age. And he was really excited one day. It was summer. He was really excited because he got to go to the pool. And he was going to ride his bike to the pool because he lived in town. And the pool was only a couple blocks away. So Johnny got on his bike and he started to go towards the pool. But he forgot a couple things. Johnny forgot his safety gear. He forgot his helmet and his elbow pads and his knee pads. What do you guys think he had on on his feet? What do you usually wear to the pool on your feet? Flip-flops, yeah. 
So Johnny had flip-flops on and he forgot all his safety gear. Now, Johnny was so excited to go to the pool because it was the first time that he got to go to the pool that summer. And when he got on his bike, like I said, he forgot his safety gear and he had flip-flops on. And he pedaled so fast. He started pedaling so fast because he was excited. But guess what? His flip-flop got caught in his bike. And what do you think happened? Johnny fell off his bike and he had to come see me in the emergency room. And I don't know if you guys can see these pictures, but he broke his arm. He broke his arm. Now, he was okay, but he had to have a cast put on. And he had to wear that cast for six weeks. Six weeks of his summer. And there's one other thing that I didn't tell you earlier that you can't do if you have a cast. And Johnny was really excited to do this the day that he broke his arm. He couldn't go swimming because he can't get his cast wet. Now, what do you guys think Johnny could have done so that he didn't have to get a cast and really didn't break his arm? Yeah. So he could have slowed down. He could have wore his proper safety equipment, so his elbow pads and his knee pads. And he could have had tennis shoes on, right? Maybe had a bag with his flip-flops in it for when he got to the pool. Because flip-flops get tangled up in your bike really easy, don't they? Yeah. Now I've got a couple questions for you guys. We talked about how to stay safe and make sure that I don't fall and you don't fall and your classmates don't fall. We're always going to take turns and we're not going to push or shove. And we're not going to lean on the screen. And we're always going to keep four on the floor. We're always going to respect each other's space. Thank you guys so much for letting me come into your classroom today, even though it was on a virtual platform. I can't wait to come back and see you guys as soon as it's safe. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Thank you.